seven female, ten ethyl, phenothiazine free kabob kabaldehyde. <laughs> it, is it is it cheating to say I'm using well I'm modeling ITIC and when you write that down as its full chemical name, it takes up about a paragraph worth of um of lines. <laughs> I think that's fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> cool. So I, I'm Mark Wilson, I'm the tutor base nodes for physical chemistry. Hi, uh, I'm Amelia. Um, I'm a fourth year chemist at Brasenos and um, I'm from Reading. Uh, hi, I'm also a fourth year chemist. My name's Ollie. Um, I'm from Middlesbrough, Teesside area. I'm what's called a theoretical chemist. I do computational and theoretical work, so I don't do any actual experiments, although I collaborate closely with people who do. So we develop models to understand relatively complex phenomena things you come across every day, like crystallization or, or how glasses form, and things of that sort. So fundamental material properties, but from a modeling perspective. So what's studying chemistry like at Brazenas? Um It's a very fun and very rewarding experience. Um, you have a lot of contact hours, um, and you're surrounded by a lot of people that um, think the same way as you do, uh, maybe not necessarily. Um, and have a very, very similar interests. Um, it's a really good subject, I suppose, in terms of meeting people, and um, particularly from outside of your college as well, due to things like labs. Um, and because you've got um, a decent amount of contact hours with all these other chemists, you get to meet them and become very good friends with them very quickly. Yeah, I'd agree with Ollie that, you know, the chemists are some of my best friends, which is really lovely. Um, and within Brasenose itself, we have three tutors, all dedicated for uh, the different parts of chemistry, so physical, inorganic, or organic. And they're all super lovely, super approachable, and also insanely intelligent. You can ask them any question and they will answer it, which is amazing. Um, and I feel like throughout my time here, I've been really supported in terms of when I've been stuck. They've always like helped me. Um, and given their time, which is, yeah, it's been really lovely. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Um, what's going to like at Brazen? It, it, it's divided up in the, in the traditional ways uh, that you'll, people will be aware of from school mostly. So inorganic chemistry and, and um, organic chemistry, which people are usually aware of, so the chemistry of carbon-based and the non-carbon-based world. And then there's physical chemistry, which is what I teach, which people are often less aware of as, a, as an identifiable entity, but is, um, is, is there everything else, is how all that fits together. It's how the kind of the understanding of energetics, thermodynamics and quantum mechanics and everything, all the stuff, stuff that brings the other parts of the course together. So, so Brazenos is divided into those three areas. Um, we teach along those lines, but everything is linked together to try and bring together the connectivity between the, the very different areas. Chemistry is a very broad subject. I'm sure everyone says this about their subject, but it's a very broad subject. It goes all the way from kind of almost a biology end to almost a physics end. That's a, so it's a huge scope of, of, of material that students become aware of. And I think in the, it, that's, that's a real benefit to them as, as they go along in their careers. So have you always wanted to study chemistry? No. no. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to go first? Um, yeah, I only decided I wanted to, to study chemistry at the end of year 12, and that was purely from studying chemistry at A-level. Um, and then, you know, when, I, when it came to choosing what I wanted to do, just reading around the subject, I realised, wow, chemistry is actually really interesting. And also, in my mind, chemistry is like four different subjects in one. So you get a bit of everything. So I felt like it was a good thing to do when I wasn't completely sure exactly where my career wanted to go. Uh, but yeah, it was definitely a last minute decision, but I'm glad I did it. <laughs> yeah. um, I had a very similar kind of split second decision um, a few months before I actually applied for UCAS, send in the um, application form in about October, I think it is. Um, I wanted to study maths for a very, very long time. Um, and then having started looking to the uni courses and stuff, I realized that just maths wasn't really for me. Um, I wasn't really interested in what the university courses were talking about. I was way more interested in applied maths and um, stuff like differential equations and chemistry being one of the um, A-level subjects that I, I also took was perfect for that. It was something that I really enjoyed anyway. I chose it for A-level um, and it also 
um, integrated all this stuff from maths that I really, really enjoyed. Um, so it, it wasn't until very, very late on in the process really that I chose chemistry over maths. So how has the chemistry course changed in recent years? Well, the, the chemistry course is, is constantly evolving. Um, I mean, it, it, it may seem in Oxford that things don't move in any reasonable time scale, but in fact, at the departmental level, they do. So the department is constantly reviewing what it offers in terms of material. So, uh, for example, in my area of sort of theoretical computational chemistry, um, aspects such as machine learning and, and the use of computational software are, are, are things that are coming in as part of the practical course, which didn't exist even four or five years ago. So there's a constant review process. I mean, some fundamental materials re remains the same. You know, there's, there, there's still some maths, there's thermodynamics, there's quantum mechanics, all those sorts of things that you need. But as you go further along in the course, there, 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 are, there are more options, different options, and those, those are constantly being reviewed. So it's a, although Oxford is a, is a, is a place steeped into the tradition, that doesn't necessarily imply that the, the, the courses are also held back by that. They're very much not. What's been your favourite topic that you guys have done so far? Um, I would say I've, I'm a massive fan of organic chemistry, live and breathe that stuff, <laughs> especially medicinal chemistry. I find it super interesting. Um, and I've um, continued that into fourth year when we do, we have a project all year and this year I'm making a skin cancer drug, which is so cool and it's really colorful and it gets you lots of mixing, <laughs> but it's, it's really fun and I've really enjoyed learning about it all the way throughout the course. Um, I'd say mine's probably a cross between photophysics and solid state materials. Um, I'm really interested in like material science and the interface of chemistry and physics. Um, my master's year this year, I'm focusing on solar cells and organic solar cell materials. Um, so obviously photophysics kind of uh, explains itself. Um, but solid state, I don't think I realized how um, interesting that would be and how integral it, integral it is to chemistry. Um, just all the cool things you can just make by sticking some rocks in a furnace, pretty much. Um, and then you can get superconductors out the back end in uh, photovoltaic materials. It's really, really incredible, I think. Awesome. So what was your first tutorial like? It was a very long time ago. Uh, um, I, it was online, I think, um, unfortunately, because of COVID. But it was a quantum mechanics yes, tutorial, it was. Yeah. I think. <laughs> a straight in the deep end. Um, yeah. But it was actually really good, to be fair, and our tutor, Mark, yeah. was really, ex you know, he loved talking about it, and I came in not knowing anything about quantum mechanics, um, and it didn't matter at all. It was actually way more relaxed than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. I was, I'm going to sound like a complete nerd by saying this, but <laughs> I was really excited to study quantum mechanics as, like, the first thing that I did, because it was something that I wrote about it in my personal statement. I was really interested in, like, digging into it and getting to know what it was actually about. Um, and our tutor Mark, he's world-renowned, I think, <laughs> for, um, for stuff like uh, computational and theoretical chemistry. So he's, he really, really knows his stuff, and he just explains concepts so well. So to sit there in your first tutorial and have this amazing academic being just so concise with these quite complex topics, it's um, arguably fun. To, to help sit there and learn from these tutors. So what would your perfect tutorial look like? Oh, gosh. Well, so the best tutorials, uh, the, the, the ideal tutorial is when you get true interactivity. Uh, and and the, 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 this is difficult to achieve because, uh, understandably, quite often when students first come as, as, as first years, they... Uh, they, they don't want to show what they perceive as a weakness, i.e. they don't want to show they don't know things. But actually, of course, as I say to them at the start, if they, if they knew everything to begin with, this whole process would be, would be irrelevant. It, 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 you know, it's, not, it's, not, it's not my expectation when I give you some work that you, you will be able to do all of it. You might be able to, that's great, but, but usually you can't, and the areas you struggle with are the ones in which we talk about. And, and what you want with students is, is them to, to feel they can ask you questions or, or, or the better still, feel they can say, um, I, didn't, I didn't understand the way you explained it. Could you explain it in a different way? 
And the answer is yes, I can. I can try and do that because, um, as I said to one of my students years ago, if, if you don't understand something that I've said to you, I'm not explaining it correctly. So, 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 so it, it's it's very much a two-way thing. And this is where the small group teaching of Oxford becomes a, a, a real plus point because we're teaching in groups of either two to one or three to one in terms of the ratio of students to tutors. And that means that students often feel more comfortable in, in sort of saying, I don't understand something because, you know, obviously if the more and more people there are, the less and less likely people are to say, I don't understand something. So the ideal tutorial very much has that two-way process, that conversation about, you know, what's going on, why don't you understand it? And that makes it much more interesting for me as well. That may, the, the tutorials aren't, aren't a grind for me. They're an interesting thing because they're all, each one is different. The material is nominally the same. But the actual tutorial itself is always different because people have different understandings and different backgrounds and stuff. So, it, so, it, so you know, that would be that would be ideal. And then maybe on a similar note, is there anything particularly strange or amusing that's happened in a tutorial that sticks out to you? Oh gosh, well, I mean, you know, my tutorials are always funny, of course, but that's just because you know, I'm a strange guy. Um, I mean, no, the, the, I mean, the, the, the oddest thing that happens occasionally is to have students who fall asleep in tutorials, and that's always a, it's always an odd one to deal with because um, you can kind of see them going, you know, you can see them drifting off. And, and the worst thing is that, that, that you, you, you remember being in a similar situation. You know, we've all been there when, when, when you've kind of been, you feel yourself going and you can't, you can't stop it. And, and, and you, you kind of, you, so you, you end up sort of talking a bit more loudly try and get them to kind of you know wake up a bit and stuff like that so I've had that happen a, I've had that happen a few times I had one student who fell asleep within five minutes of the very first tutorial he had with me and and, and, and it, it, he woke up and, and the first thing the, the, the first words he ever uttered to me in a tutorial were I'm not making a great impression am I <laughs> which was actually by far the most intelligent thing he said in the whole tutorial so 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 that's that, that's rare. I'm not that boring, but it is. It is. It is something that that happens. It's. It's. It's not a big deal, you know. Again, the students would imagine in these situations sometimes that's going to become a big problem. It's not. It's something that happens. We've all done it, and it's. It's just funny rather than being, being unpleasant. Yeah, I think stats put me to sleep a couple of times. <laughs> what was the transition from post sixteen to Oxford University like? Um, I think it's a lot about instead of, at A level you get told exactly what you need to do but at uni you just kind of have to figure out for yourself and I think that's the same no matter what uni you have to go to so it's a lot of independent learning and being able to manage your time well um, but I think it also is good that instead you know you get to read more about the stuff that you actually enjoy doing you no longer have to do anything that you dislike doing um, and it can also mean that, you know, if you're a late morning person, then it's fine. If you sleep until 11, you can still do your work and, you know, you can still fit sports and everything around it. So for me, it was actually quite like freeing to just be able to do exactly what I wanted to do. Um, I think we both went to quite big sixth ones. So the, the transition into kind of a bigger community university wise wasn't too big for us, I don't think. Um, I think, again, the, the main kind of transition was learning how to teach yourself these concepts and where you can find good resources to do that. Um, and I think it's something that didn't just happen in first year or even second year. I think throughout my entire course, I've got slowly better and better at um, learning and finding new concepts and finding ways to understand them properly as opposed to just kind of reading and copying what you kind of had dictated to you in a course. Cool. So is there anything specific you would recommend for someone looking to apply to Oxford for chemistry? Um, I would say, actually, you know, I was I did loads of extra reading and I would recommend extra reading in terms of, you know, figuring out what you actually want to do. When I was doing the extra reading for chemistry, I was like, wow, this is exactly what I want to do. But I got stressed out that you know, in the interviews, they were going to ask me yeah, about quantum mechanics. And I was like, I don't know anything. But honestly, the biggest piece of advice would I'd be is just like, look at the Visor um, A-level chemistry course, know that inside out. Don't worry about knowing, you know, like reading university texts or even beyond, you know, papers in chemistry. 
the tutors don't expect you to understand everything. Like I think they, the first lecture we had was on what curly arrows are, which I think you learn in like GCSE. Yeah. So they really teach you from a ground up. But I think honestly, what the tutors are looking for is just you being enthusiastic about chemistry and willing to problem solve and sometimes get things wrong. You know, it's not about being perfect or being a, some kind of genius. <laughs> yeah. um, I'd probably recommend trying to find fun ways to engage with chemistry because um, if you can find stuff like that and go to them and uh, kind of do applied chemistry or maybe extend your um, chemistry knowledge a bit more, um, it's a really good indicator of whether you actually want to study it at uni. So um, I'd already applied by that point, but when I was in year 12, I did the chemistry race um, and I absolutely loved it. And it kind of um, consolidated in me a love for chemistry and I was absolutely sure I wanted to do chemistry at university after that. Um, the Just the shameless plug, um, the chemistry race is now Oxford as well. So that would be a really great thing to do um, for applicants. What qualities do you look for in an ideal chemistry candidate? An interview? Um, well, you're looking for someone with enthusiasm for the subject. Um, we're looking for someone who can think about the subject. So, so in a typical kind of interview scenario at Brazenose, what will happen is you'll typically have two interviews. One will be in the organic and the organic spheres, and the other one will be in the physical chemistry and the maths, the bits I do. And what I'm looking for are, so what, what I will typically ask people to do is, is, you know, perhaps sketch some kind of function which I will give them, and then we'll talk about what they've sketched and what it means and all of that. And, and I'm not, what, I'm, what I'm not testing there is, do you know, have you seen this function before? In fact, I will usually say to people, it's not my expectation you've seen this before. And, and I'll, I'll see how they kind of work with this thing. They've, they'll know the elements to, but they won't have come across explicitly before. And then we'll try and relate it because, of course, the key in chemistry here is that, is that you know, maths is, maths is maths. That's great. But it has to relate physically to something. So something that is, a, is the size of an atom or the length of a bond or something. There's some physical reality in there. And, and we'll talk to the students about what the physical reality means and, and therefore and, and can, they, can they interpret what these equations might mean in terms of the underlying uh, physics and chemistry of the problem. So you're looking for someone who can think about a problem, who can, who, who, who's able to kind of, you know, partition up various bits of information. I'm not particularly looking for people who have an amazing, you know, um, library-like knowledge of chemi chemical facts, if you like. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with knowing a lot of chemistry. But, but the interview is not a test of, you know, can you, can you, find, can you find bromium in the periodic table? Yeah, because you can, you can look at it in a book. 